both of these guys sitting at 62%. Alex Stathakist for the Denver Pioneers, 5'11", 225 pounds. He's a warrior, the most competitive player that Coach Brown of Denver has ever coached. And then Justin Wheatfeld for Michigan. He has the quick hands. He'll pop it forward. He has all the confidence in the world to go score it. Don't be surprised if the winner of this battle is the winner of the game today, Jeff. Stathakis in white, Wheatfeld in blue. We are underway here out west as the first round continues. And it's Denver that starts with the ball, a Pioneers team that lost in shocking fashion to the Big East semifinal a week ago. Still did enough during the course of the regular season to earn the number five seed. They try and settle in to their opening possession. And that what plagued them in that semifinal loss, Jules, was a slow start, fell down to the scoring. What did you say, Jules? Winner of the faceoff could win the game. First faceoff goes to Stathakis, and the Pios cash in. Wheatfeld wins this one. And the Wolverines can settle into their first offensive possession. Stathakis back to the faceoff. X wins it. And now Silstra as Denver tries to settle in offensively. And we were talking this week, Jules. We didn't know what kind of tempo this game was played at because of X. Two goals, five minutes apart at Denver, a 2 1 lead. You get into playoff lacrosse, backs against the wall. Every ground ball is crucial. And Michigan will look back at that and say, should have been a ground ball going the other way. Instead, scooped up by Denver, and they cash in. And the Pioneers dialed in. B. Denedetto, and Denver's off and running. Great save, Hunter Taylor. Trips, it's 2018. They felt like they had a team good enough to make the NCAA tournament a year ago. They were the first team left out of the field, felt snubbed by the committee. And now they're rolling. Michael Lampert rockets one by Hunter Taylor. And it is all Denver in this first quarter. Jay, I think you heard you say, we got snubbed. He put the power behind that shot. Michael Lampert just wide open, right? Michigan defense doesn't really slide up field, right? Right there, they need to slide up field. They hesitate, almost get caught right in between each other, and Lampert just brings that stick low and snaps that thing high and just extends his Denver lead 5-1. to one. They're off to a fantastic start. Oh now, speaking with the senior leaders of this Denver program, the fact that they were the first team left out fueled them all offseason to work harder, come together for this final run. They've made the NCAA tournament, and they are making the most of this opportunity so far, a 5-1 lead. And so far, this does not look like the same Michigan team that bulldozed their way through the Big Ten tournament. Denver. Five unanswered goals in the last six minutes and 20 seconds. And they win another faceoff. What do you attribute this dominant first quarter to for Denver Jules? One word to describe that. Uh, no, I hear you. At home. Eight seconds here. Wheatfeld wins the draw. Mikey Bame in this Michigan offense. They have not got going. 15 minutes down, and it is all Denver. What did we say at the top of the show? Close competitive game. Well, it might get there. Well, you couldn't have scripted a better start for Matt Brown, the first year head coach of this Denver Pioneers team. We said it early on, Jay, a big factor to Denver winning this game was going to be handling the moment. They've done exactly that. And it, it starts with their intensity, their toughness, 
they didn't have a ton of TV games this year. I feel like they came into this game feeling like there's a lack of respect for them as a program, as a team. They're proving early. It was not part of this program when they went last in 2021. He said a lot of these guys just wanted to taste the tournament. Motivated them all season. Fueled their fire was the term he used. Well, that fire is roaring here in the first round. Seven unanswered goals for the Pioneers. Stathakis, the faceoff man, stays on. And a timeout called by Michigan. The nation. Team Canada U21 member. Only his third goal of the season. He's used to being a lockdown defender. That time, nobody saw him. He was totally left alone for an easy finish. And it's eight unanswered goals for this Denver team. Been part of both Michigan goals. And offense has been tough to find here out west for the Wolverines. Good hustle. Justin Wheatfeld, faceoff man for Michigan, but Wolverines couldn't find the ground ball. This is where, if you're Michigan defensively, okay, you get the goal, you need to start stringing together some stops, right? Absolutely. And just number one thing, don't Denver sideline is for him to score that goal. So you would have thought that maybe a, a man down defensive hold there for Michigan could have started to build momentum. Instead, the Pioneers continue to dominate this first round matchup. Just the third goal of the season for Clark. As the Pioneers continue to roll in this first half, four minutes left in it. This is the longest clamp in what has been a fun face-off battle to watch between Justin Wheatfeld and Alex Stathakis. It's Wheatfeld who emerges. Stathakis never gives up. Ultra competitor. He is a warrior at the dot. That is a perfect example of what he has brought to Denver throughout his career. And, and Wheatfeld right there, instead of goosing that, right, that has to be a tough ground ball that you pick up if you're Michigan. Timeout Denver. At the dot today, won the last three face-offs to finish the first half. And now trying to protect a 10-3 lead. Stathic is shoved out of bounds. Michigan, you know, they were bullied in that first half. Thought Denver just was way more physical, dominated. So it's Michigan who has the first hit of this game, but then they go and turn it over. Yeah, another example of a lack of stick protection. There's just a lack of awareness by the Michigan players clearing the ball that just can't continue to happen, Jay. Yeah, you thought maybe you go into the locker room, you get that big sit in the roof of the net. And that is an angle that you can't score on. And yet Silstrop does. Yeah, and, and talking to Coach Brown, he believes he'll be a fantastic player in the indoor league, maybe potentially gets picked up by the San Diego Seals in the NLL. You got in, insider information there? He's a San Diego guy. Right. You know, they love to, to make sure that those guys stay, stay home. No reason not to. An eight-goal deficit here in the second half for Michigan. Who could have predicted this? If you were watching the Big Ten championship game, and see Michigan throttle Penn State 16 to what Michigan lacked in that first half is when Denver went on their run they couldn't stop it they couldn't answer so what Denver scores with that great goal by Silstrap a minute and seven seconds later Bain does answer Denver had eight unanswered goals during that run in the first half and now Michigan's gonna have to go on a run of their own Cohen, known as a gifted feeder. He's got two of the Wolverines five, and for the first time today, Michigan nets back-to-back -back goals. Wheatfeld wins another face-off for Michigan. That is five in a row for Justin Wheatfeld at the face-off X. That's the recipe for a comeback. Got to keep possession, though, and the Wolverines do. 
Roberts decides to go to goal and scores. That would be a two-pointer in the PLL. Counts for one here in college. Cahal Roberts rockets one from deep. From the top of the mountain, Jules. Roberts. Watch him wind up here. He's like, ah, should I shoot it? Yeah, I'm going to shoot that thing. That's massive. A pole goal. Three goals in a row for Michigan. Cahal Roberts, the graduate, senior out of Princeton. He wants to win. He doesn't want this to be his last game today, Jay. Three goals in two minutes and 45 seconds, just 18 seconds between the last two goals. And just like that, Michigan with momentum for the first time today. Still trailing by five, but they have done enough here in the opening four minutes and 30 seconds of the third quarter to give themselves some life in this first round matchup. Stathicus just keeps it in play for Denver. Now can the Wolverines defense deliver after the offense has given them a much needed boost. Nobody picks up Miloski. Well defended, Silstrop right on the doorstep, thought he had an easy finish. And Rowan Clay didn't give up on that play. Pokes it free and Michigan can get to work again. They've scored three in three minutes and nine seconds. Four goals for the Big Ten champs. Jay, knowing Michigan and how their season goes, could we have expected anything different than this? They play their best lacrosse when their backs are against the wall. Well, their backs are against the wall, trailing by eight here in the third quarter. Four goals in a little more than three minutes, and they win another faceoff. The belief continues to grow. Five goals for the Wolverines here in the third quarter. And they are right back in it. What was once an eight-goal lead for Denver has been cut to just three. Massive face-off win for Alex Stathakis. This Pioneers offense has only had one possession during this 5-0 Michigan run. Boy, with the ten minutes between Denver goals, Michigan scored five during that time. Kelly, a hat-trick, his fifth career hat-trick. This one comes in the NCAA tournament opening round in front of a sold-out Peter Barton crowd. Michigan looking for a juice goal off the faceoff win. Kyle Stevenson didn't get the balance right there. Just Miloski's second career hat trick. The crafty Canadian. That's a big momentum goal because if Michigan had cut it to four or even scored a goal, make it a three-goal game, headed into the fourth quarter, you really start to sweat if you're Denver. Instead, two goals to grow that cushion. After Michigan had scored five in a row, Den Justin Wheatfeld, the Michigan faceoff man, going against Alex Stathakis. And he's gotten the better of Stathakis today. Michigan up 14 to eight. At the faceoff X, which is surprising because Stathik is one of the best faceoff men in the country. Came into today's game with only two goals on the season. He's doubled his goal tally because he's got two goals to his name today. You see him as a lockdown short stick all season. And he has been lost in transition twice today. And Dan Anderson and Casey Wilson, two short stick defensive midfielders for Denver that are as good a, good a pair as anybody in the country. And after Michigan had cut this Denver lead to three, the Pioneers have roared back with three. And now a seven goal lead, a little more than 10 minutes left. Alex Stathakis wins the faceoff, but gives it to Michigan. Patterson decides to push it. Wolverines can't find a clean look. Deflection. AJ Mer much needed for Michigan. Because now not only are you down by six, but you're running out of time. You've only scored nine goals in the entire game. 
you've got to find six in the final nine minutes. And you got to hold Denver scoreless, which has been an impossible task. The Pioneers executing at a very high level offensively, Jules. So not only the time when this game finishes. So Michigan needing five goals in the final seven minutes and 35 seconds. Well, they scored five goals in three minutes and 35 seconds in the third quarter. So when they can get it going, they can score goals in a hurry. Problem is, Jules, they need the ball. Yeah, they, they definitely need the ball. And Weefeld has to be winning faceoffs at this point in the game because they've had difficulty clearing it. Or we know they're not going to score every time, so he has to be the differentiator for them to get those extra possessions. Well, the reality of the situation is if Michigan played like they did in the second half of the first half, this would have been the close competitive game we expected. But they dug too deep a hole, a, a mountain too steep to climb here in Denver. And when you go down 10-3, 11-3, 10-3 at halftime, and then Silstrop scored the first goal of the third quarter to put Michigan in that eight-goal hole, and it was just too much for the Wolverines to overcome. Dearnan pulls one back. He's saying we're not done yet. And it's a five goal game with 247 to play. And if Justin Wheatfeld is perfect at the faceoff X, never say die, says Michigan. It's another strong feed by Ryan Cohen here. Again, they didn't draw a lot of attention, which I think that's what's been hurting them. But then they're seemingly getting these opportunities every once in a while where someone like Tiernan can just set up in the slot. A good job running through the approach there, and, and that's his bread and butter, right? His right hand running through that contact and setting his feet. One six, get in his ass right now, one six. Let's go, baby. Come on, AJ, get in his ass. Stathicus wins it to himself. Denver will look to kill this clock. Taylor out of his cage again. The 10 man ride pays off. Tiernan has it. Leading scorer goes low, and Kleben there to meet him. 